Welcome to Div Rhino, a channel dedicated to project-based learning. I'm glad you're here. If you find these videos to be helpful, please like them and consider subscribing for more content. And if you've already subscribed, I appreciate you doing so. In this tutorial, we will learn how to build an interactive command line app with Go, Cobra and Prompt UI. We will see how we can prompt the user for input data and persist this data to an SQLite database. To follow along, you will need to have Go and the Cobra generator installed. Let's change into our sites folder to get started. Then we can make a project directory called Study Buddy and immediately change into it. We will initialize this as a Cobra project using the Cobra generator and passing in a package name. Remember, this package name is usually the location your project can be downloaded from, so please feel free to substitute your own URL for this step. Using the same package name, we will also initialize Go modules to handle our dependencies. Then we can run GoModTidy to add our module requirements and checksums. When we open our project inside our text editor, we will see that the Cobra generator has created files to help us get going. Let's open up our root command and change the descriptions. We can set different content for our short and long descriptions. We can go ahead and build our app to test it out. If the build was successful, a binary should appear in our project folder. We can now run our binary relative to our project folder and our long description prints in the terminal. Next up, we can start setting up our database. We begin the process by creating a data directory and a data.go file within it. Let's also install the Go SQL Lite package. Then inside our data.go file, we can indicate that it is part of a package we will call data. Let's import the SQL driver package from the Go standard library, as well as the SQL package we just installed. We will set up a package level variable to hold our database instance. We do this because we have to use the same database for all our actions. Now we can create a function that will open a database connection pool. This function will have an error as its only return value. Inside the body of the open database function, we will declare an error variable. We don't use the short variable declaration syntax here because we want to be able to assign to the package level db variable we declared earlier. Then we will use the SQL open method passing to it our driver name as well as the location of our database. The SQL open method returns a database instance and an error. So let's do some quick error handling before we move on. If we hit an error, we just return it. Lastly, we will return whatever we get back when we ping the database connection. Now we can use our newly created open database function from within our main.go file. Let's import our data package, then we can open the database connection inside the body of func main. We also want the ability to create a table within our database. Heading back into the data.go file, let's create a function called create table. Whenever we interact with a database, we need to speak to it using SQL. Let's write a simple SQL statement that will create a table called study buddy. The table will have a primary key called ID note, a text column for word, another text column for definition, and yet another text column to store the category. We can use the dbprepare method and pass it our create table SQL statement. dbprepare returns an SQL statement and an error. So let's do some quick error handling before we move on. If we hit an error, we want to log it. So let's also ensure we're properly importing the log package. Lastly, we want to execute our statement and print a little message to indicate our table has been successfully created. Now let's create a command to initialize our app. We can do this by running the Cobra add command in the terminal. Let's quickly update the descriptions for our new init command. 
We don't want to spend a lot of time thinking of what to write, so we can just use the same text for both the short and long descriptions. We want to use this init command to trigger the create table function. So let's import our data package so we can access the create table function from it. If we build our app now, we can run our newly created init command. A new database table was successfully created, so an SQLite database file is now present in our project directory. We've made it to our first milestone and you're doing great. Now let's keep going. In this next section, we will start building out some features that will allow us to create notes. We can add a new Cobra command called note. And you guessed it, the first thing we have to do is update the command descriptions. We haven't done anything significant here yet, but let's build our app to see what we've got so far. If we run our note command now, we see that it behaves exactly how you'd expect a command to behave. It executes whatever is in the run function. That's not actually what we want. We don't want this command to have any actions of its own. We just need it to act as a base for the other subcommands we will create later. We can achieve this by simply removing the run function. I guess we can also remove these comments while we're here. Now if we build our app and test it again, we get the command description instead. With our base command done, we can start creating our very first subcommand using Cobra New. You may notice this command is slightly different from the other commands we've implemented thus far. If we open up the new.go file, we will see that the new subcommand was added to note. But if we look inside the note.go file, we will see that it was added to root. So we can say that new is a subcommand of note. Getting back to the task at hand, let's update the descriptions of the note new command. And let's also go ahead and install the prompt UI package so we can start adding interactivity to our app. Let's also import it into our new.go file. And I guess we can clean our comments while we're here. Every prompt has a similar shape so we can capture this in a prompt content struct type. Before we dive into prompts a bit more, let's take a detour and visit the Prompt UI documentation. Prompt UI has two main input modes, Prompt and Select. We will implement both of them in our app. Let's first tackle the Prompt input mode. We will create a new function called Prompt Get Input. It will take prompt content as its only argument and it will return the user's answer as a string. There are three key components for the prompt input mode, a validate function, templates, and a prompt. Our validate function will be simple. We just want to ensure the input is not empty. If the length of the input is less than or equal to zero, we will return the error message from the prompt content we passed in. Since we're using errors, let's make sure we're importing the errors package from the Go standard library. Let's also import other necessary packages while we're at it. The next key component is the template. We can use template strings to style the different states of the prompt. The last key component is the prompt. Here we combine the templates and the validate function to determine the behavior of our input prompt. Now that all the config is done, we can run our prompt. The run method returns a result from the user and an error. So let's do some quick error handling before we move on. If we hit an error, we will let the user know that the prompt has failed, then we will exit. If the prompt successfully captures user input in the result variable, we will just print it back and return it. We've just created our first prompt. Now we need to create a function that constructs our notes. A note consists of a word, a definition, and a category. Let's set up a new prompt content struct for our word. Then let's capture the word as an input from the user. We can use our prompt get input function to do this. Let's also set up a new prompt content struct for our definition. Then let's capture the definition as input from the user. If we recall, a note should consist of a word, a definition, and a category. We will create a different prompt function to capture the category, so let's create that now. This time, we will make use of the select input mode from prompt UI. It will take prompt content as its only argument and it will return the user's answer as a string. 
Because we are using the Select Input mode, we need to give the user some items to select from. We will set the initial index to negative 1. We do this because negative 1 does not exist as an index in the item slice. This keeps the prompt open until the user selects an item with a valid index. Let's also declare variables for our result and error. As long as the index value is less than 0, we want the prompt to remain open. Here we are using select with add. This means we're giving the user the ability to add their own options to the item slice. When we run our prompt, it'll return an index, a result, and an error. If our index value is equal to negative 1, we will append the option to the item slice. Let's remember to do some quick error handling before we move on. If we encounter an error, we will let the user know the prompt has failed, then we will exit. If the prompt successfully captures user input in the result variable, we will just print it back and return it. Now we can update our create new note function to include the category. Let's set up a new prompt content struct for our category. Then let's capture the category as an input from the user. Now that we have a way to create new notes, we also need a way to insert these notes into our database. Let's head back into our data package and create a new function called insert note. It will accept a word, a definition, and a category as arguments and it will not have any return values. Because this function will be talking to the database, we need to use SQL. Our insert statement is very straightforward. We want to insert into the study buddy table and the values will be three placeholders because we're expecting those values to come from the user. We can use the dbprepare method and pass it our insert node SQL statement. dbprepare returns an SQL statement and an error. So let's do some quick error handling before we move on. If we hit an error, we want to log it to the console. Lastly, we want to execute our statement. The exact method returns an error, so let's do some quick error handling before we move on. If we hit an error, we want to log it to the console. Let's print a little message to indicate our data has been successfully inserted. Now let's put this new method to use. Heading back into our new.go file, let's first import our data package. Then let's scroll down to our create new note function so we can use it. Uh oh, it looks like we forgot a comma here. So let's quickly fix that before we move on. Okay, back to scrolling down. Inside create new note, we can call our insert note function from the data package. Then we can pass it our word, our definition, and our category. The last thing we need to do to get the new command working is to call create new note inside the run function. Now let's go ahead and build our app so we can test it out. If we run study buddy note new, we will be prompted for a word. Then we will be prompted for its definition. Then we will be asked to select a category for it. Once all that data is captured, our new note will be inserted into the database. Let's add another note for good measure. We've made it to our second milestone. You're doing a wonderful job. The most complicated sections are behind us, so everything will be downhill from here. For the final section of this tutorial, we need to head back into our data package and create a function that will allow us to list all the notes we've created. Let's call our function display all notes. And again, because we're talking to a database, we need SQL. This time, instead of a statement, we just need a query. Our easy little query is just selecting everything from the study buddy table and ordering them by word. db.query returns a row and an error. So let's do some quick error handling before we move on. If we encounter an error, we will log it to the console. We need to remember to close the row too. Using defer means that the row will close once we reach the end of the function. Then we'll want to run through all the rows of notes we have and print them out in the terminal. We've gone and put the horse before the cart, so now we need to take a step back and create a new subcommand that we can use to display all our notes. We can use cobra new to create a new list subcommand under the base note command. Let's quickly update the command descriptions. Then let's import our data package so we can call display all notes inside the run function. 
Now if we build our app, we can run study buddy note list to see a list of all our notes. It's worth mentioning that users are able to add their own categories. So let's add a word with a brand new category. And I guess we can add a few more notes to fill up the list. And there you have it. In this tutorial, we learned how to create an interactive command line application with Go, Cobra and Prompt UI. We created several commands that enabled us to read from and write to a little baby SQL database. I hope you had fun. A text version of this tutorial can be found on divrhino.com and a repo can be found on my GitHub account. I'll leave both links in the description for this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to build more projects like this, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.